smell the package and yes I'm being quite weird right now and I am smelling my mail <laughs> it smells like vanilla I've definitely been going down a vanilla rabbit hole since sharing my vanilla extract video with you guys and when I asked that question on where do you guys get some amazing beans I had some great suggestions back but one I have absolutely fallen in love with is Indri Vanilla I've got a couple of lots of vanilla from them now three different kinds of beans and it's really opened up my eyes to the diversity of beans out there and I'm going to show you the ones that I've got from them so far today um, I'm also going to show you what I've done with them because I've got some incredible ideas including a really cool idea for making vanilla sugar that I'm going to show you and some different ideas on making different types of vanilla extracts and yeah I want to tell you a little bit about the actual Facebook group as well that I've joined with these guys because it is just so incredibly inspiring it's just a beautiful community and my goodness that is putting me down a bit of a vanilla making rabbit hole <music> super easy all I did was a bit of a search on Facebook found the group and applied to join and yeah really quickly I was accepted into the group and from there I just started having a bit of a look through all the resources and it was absolutely incredible and inspiring seeing all the different things people were making with vanilla all the different ways of doing extracts and heaps of people doing different types of vanilla pastes people using vanilla in all different types of baking and then some really cool hats as well like the one that I'm going to show you guys in this video of things like making vanilla sugars in lots of different ways and the one that I'm doing is probably the most hacky version but yeah there's some pretty nifty ways that people are doing stuff and vanilla powder is another one like so many amazing amazing ideas so definitely recommend joining that Facebook group and from there I kind of followed through to their website and on the website, it guides you through how to go about kind of um, making orders. In fact, there's some really good resources even linked into the Facebook group itself as well on making orders. Because what I found is through the website, you could make orders, but it seemed to be more of a retail sort of thing when you go through the website. But as soon as you go through the Facebook group, there's more like the buying group type options and you can kind of follow through when they put on the Facebook group that there's a particular bean um, and they give these really nifty little nicknames to the different types of beans that they have. So when one goes on sale, you can kind of follow through and there's like an order form that you can use where you put your details in. Um, you then pay separately. So I was able to use PayPal to do that. So that was kind of nice and secure, which is always good when you're going to buy something through Facebook, particularly the first time if you're a little bit unsure about things. So yeah, paying with uh, PayPal was kind of handy. And from there, you got an email and they are really good keeping you informed while you're waiting for your delivery on where things are at through kind of the email. But what's even better is if you go into the resources on the Facebook group, there's this little section in there where you can do an order lookup and it gives you this kind of cool little bar in your lookup and it shows you where in the deliveries you sit and then it shows kind of like this little progressive bar coming across as they're getting closer to sending off your order and then it shows when it's shipped as well. And it was pretty quick for getting the delivery. I was really surprised between, you know, getting from the US over here to Australia. Um, it really wasn't a lot of time. So how about let me show you the orders and I'll also show you what I did with them. I am so excited. The package has arrived. And how cool is the color of this? You definitely can't miss these packages in the mail. They are nice and bright and purple. And oh my gosh. They actually smell like vanilla. It's crazy when I smell the package. And yes, I'm being quite weird right now. And I am smelling my mail. It smells like vanilla. Um, wow. This actually got here way quicker than I expected. It's like the 1st of December. And I can see this was posted on the 21st of the 11th. So if you're in Australia, you probably notice the date is a little back to front to what it normally is for us. Um, yeah, obviously posted from the US. So 21st, the 11th, that was posted. So this has taken 
only 10 days to get to us. And I reckon that's pretty good for international mail. Because I was a bit worried, I must admit, coming, you know, from the US all the way to Australia, whether it would take too long and, you know, whether that could affect the quality of the beans. Because, yeah, it's also summertime at the moment and, yeah, hot conditions and gosh knows what kind of conditions it's going to go through in the mail. But, yeah, it's got here really quick. So really, really happy with that. Um, is there anything else interesting on here to show you guys? So, yeah, pretty much just shows that it is dry vanilla beans, where it's come from, and yeah, obviously the details, and it's got the weight of the package as well. Yeah, so nothing else too interesting on here. What I reckon we need to do is take this inside properly and open it up. I really can't get over how incredible this package smells. All right, I reckon what we need to do is open this one up together. Actually have a look at what the beans look like inside and how they're packaged. Okay. So here's our beans. And they have been packaged up really, really well for transport in a nice tight vacuum seal bag. No air in there. I have seen in other parts of the world that Indri does package them a little bit different. I think for their domestic market, they actually pop them in Ziploc bags. So I'm guessing what they do is they pop them in these vacuum seal bags when it's going overseas to places like us in Australia. I'm also really liking the labeling that's come on this. So it makes it really clear on what these beans are. So they're the Madagascar bourbon cure vanilla beans, elderberries. Now I probably should let you know that um, these ones here were that first order that I made. And when I did, I noticed that every order has a nickname to it. So where it says elderberries, it's not actually the variety or anything. That's actually the nickname of these berries, uh, not berries of these <laughs> vanilla beans. Um, I have since now made a second order and the second order that I've made is nicknamed Frenchy, And that was one that they did for what they were calling their Cyber Monday sale. These ones are a fairly standard bean from what I can understand. And I am still learning a little bit about my beans. Um, but the Frenchy sale that they did and their Cyber Monday sort of deal was about a bit of a, what they call a roulette. And they put it out that they were selling off a whole bunch of beans that were kind of their more premium beans of different varieties um, that you would pay a certain amount and you basically kind of get what you get with the spin of the wheel. And that's why they were calling it their roulette sale. And I thought, why not get some different beans so that I can compare to these ones just to see what type of variety there is. Because, you know, I am a fairly, uh, you know, newbie when it comes to, to vanilla beans and different types and stuff like you know I've normally just bought whatever I've seen online or even at the supermarket where you pay a lot to get a built vanilla bean but you know I haven't really taken any notice to varieties and things or the difference between beans you know it's really just been as simple as in my vanilla extract video where I just grab some beans pop it in alcohol after splitting them and let it sit there for at least six months and then use it and that has always made a very nice vanilla extract um, and you can see how to do that. That, that honestly is a nice, quick, easy, and usually fairly inexpensive way of making some vanilla extract. Check out the, um, vanilla extract video I did to, to see how I did that. But, um, yeah, I thought why not make an order of the premium beans and see how that compares to the more standard sort of sorts. So the ones that we're going to look at today are a fairly, you know, standard sort from what I can uh, understand, but, um, yeah. Well, why not give it a go with Frenchie? So what I'll do is I will perhaps extend this video now and I'll show you what it's like when we get the Frenchie beans so we can compare the two. Anyway, I really want to open this up and what's really cool, and yes, I'm sniffing it again, is that this bag here is not only going to help us make some vanilla extract today, which we're going to do together, but we're also going to use it to make some vanilla sugar as well. All right, let's start off though by opening it up. And then we can make the vanilla extract and I'm going to show you how we use this bag as a bit of a hack that I've learned through the group to make the vanilla sugar. So to open this up, I noticed that there's a little notch in it where I could potentially tear that 
but I don't want to do that because I actually want to keep this package as long as possible for making the vanilla sugar today. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just snip off the top as close to the top as possible. And I'll get rid of that bit there. And then we can pull out our beans. Oh, wow. They smell amazing. Wow, look at these. Here's our vanilla beans. And they smell absolutely incredible. They've also got a bit of flex to them. And as I'm touching those, I probably shouldn't touch them too much because you can see the oils are starting to come off onto my fingers. Wow, they smell beautiful. Now, what we're going to do today for the vanilla extract is we're going to do a kind of like a double strength vanilla extract, which is called a double fold. And to do that, I'm actually going to use all of these beans and I'm going to put that into this jar here, which is about a 600 ml. It's like a pint and a half jar. Um, you don't need to use a ball mason jar or anything like that. Any jar will work, but that's one that I've got that will make quite a good seal. So they're going to go straight in here. I'm not going to actually split them. So you probably noticed in some of the previous videos that I've done, what I do is I actually split the beans. Now, I've learnt another tip from this group. Um, and what they say is if you pop your vanilla beans in whole like this, then what you can do is at a later time when you want to do things like baking, you can pull your beans out, you can split the bean, you can scrape out the vanilla seeds that are inside and you can use that in your baking and then pop them back in your container. And I reckon that is a super cool idea for baking type purposes. So that's why I'm going to leave these ones whole. But what that does mean is this is going to take a little bit longer than normal to be ready. And when I do split the beans, you can kind of get away with about six months. Um, I've found six months to be perfectly fine. Longer, obviously, the better. And it is usually ideal with your vanilla extracts to go about a year. But um, yeah, if you're not going to split the beans, it definitely does take longer. And you want to leave it for at least a year in that particular circumstance. Hmm. Now our beans are kind of longer than this jar which I'm not a huge fan of really. So what I might do is have a look and see if I've got another jar that they'll fit into better. The reason I don't like that is essentially, I, I always want my beans to be completely submerged. I don't want any risk of molding or anything like that. And the other thing as well is you're, you're basically trying to create an infusion where the oils coming out of these beautiful vanilla beans into the alcohol that you're using. And if you've got anything outside of that alcohol, it's not gonna be infusing. So let me go and have a quick look at the other jars I have at the moment, and then we'll make a call. I couldn't find a better jar to use today, so we are gonna persevere with this one, because I really do need to get the beans out of the bag and into some alcohol. That's actually one of the things that the group does recommend when you get your beans, that you do make sure that you, you pop it in alcohol um, even if you are going to do something else like making vanilla paste at a later time, it just makes sure that you don't kind of affect the quality of the beans in any way. They do apparently actually soak them in bourbon, I think it is, before they uh, post them out as part of kind of the preserving process. I've learned lots of interesting things about the beans, you know, like how they boil them and all sorts of good stuff. But um, yeah. Anyway, let's get, sorry, I'm going on a tangent. So let's get back to making the extract. So now that we've got all of these in the jar, the next thing we need to do is just pop in some alcohol. And today I'm just going to use a bit of a neutral spirit. Now, you probably saw I've done another kind of experimental batch with some beans recently. And with that one, I've used a couple of different sorts of alcohol. I've got like vodka and I've got... I did like a spiced rum in that one as well. So I'm also having a bit of a play with different flavors and things at the moment. But this one here, I do just want to keep it super simple. And I'm going to do just neutral alcohol. Now you're probably noticing I'm filling this to the tippy tippy top. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because these beans, you can see, are popping out at the moment. But what I'm thinking is, even though they don't fit in this jar properly, if I fill that to the tippy top and then I put my cap on, it's actually going to push everything underneath that level of the alcohol. So that's kind of the trick that I'm going to use to get everything in underneath and have nothing exposed. And hopefully that should hold fast without any leakage, which is good. There we go. So that's pretty much it for making vanilla extract. It really is a super simple thing to make. Alcohol, vanilla beans, and time. So time is the critical thing. As I said with this one here, because I haven't split the beans, I'm gonna leave that now for the next 12 months. All right, that's our extract. Now let's get on to the vanilla sugar. So you probably noticed I haven't thrown this bag away. And that was because of a little trick that I learned through the injury group where people were saying, you know, it's not like a formal way of making vanilla sugar, but what they were finding is that, I don't know if you can see on the bag here, there's all of this beautiful oil. And while the uh, vanilla beans are all packaged up and while they're in transit, you know, this bag here has been kind of imparting with this incredible aroma of the beans. And also you've had the transfer of this oil. And what people have said is that if you put sugar in this bag, you can basically create like a, a bit of a hack quick vanilla sugar. So I reckon we're going to give that a bit of a go. What I'm not going to do though is a huge batch because this is obviously a bit experimental. So what I'm going to do is just grab, well, I've got a half a cup measure here. So I'm probably going to grab about half a cup, see what that looks like in the bag. And then, you know, we'll make a call whether we add a bit more or not. Now, I am so happy I got my new batch of honest-to-goodness bulk um, food. And that means I'm back in my bulk sugar again, which is cool because that means that I can put some beautiful sugar in here as opposed to the other sugar I was having to use recently. I'm going to do a separate video on the honest-to-goodness ordering. If you haven't done bulk ordering of food before and have kind of been wondering how all that works, then maybe that's something you'll be interested in. It might actually be out already, so maybe check the channel. And um, yeah, that'll kind of show you what bulk ordering is all like for, for things like sugar, but also other things like nuts and oh, so many other good things. Anyway, back to our vanilla sugar, though. You can see what I've done now is I've added in that kind of first, well, it's probably a bit of a lean half a cup, I'm just kind of moving that around a little bit in there. And I could definitely add more than that. So let's add a bit more. I am, however, glad I used my small scoop so that I can fit it in the bag and it's not going everywhere. In fact, I reckon I can do even more. Let's do another half a cup. It's kind of a bit of a balance, I feel, that. I want enough that it's going to be worthwhile, but I don't want to do so much that we don't get enough vanilla actually through the sugar that we put in here. Okay, I'm just kind of squishing it into those oils just so I can get as much contact as possible. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is actually seal that up. And what I think I'm going to do is actually grab my vacuum sealer to do that. And that will give it a nice firm seal and it means that I can leave this for a little while as well. So let me just grab the vacuum sealer. So there's our vacuum sealer. It's just one of those cheapy ones from uh, Aldi that I've probably had for the last, I don't know, eight or nine years I reckon. It's been a long time. Pretty much when the Aldi opened in Victoria I bought this thing. And um, yeah, it's just as simple as, obviously I've tried to clean a little area at the top because I did have lots of granules of sugar. I'm not going to get the oils off, that's just the reality. And normally when you vacuum seal, you know, you try and extract the air as much as possible. But on this occasion, I don't really want to do that because I actually want to be able to move the sugar about in there. So I'm just going to hit the seal button, which is that one there. And that should then seal along the edge of our little pack. And done. There we go. As I said, I haven't let all the air out and that means that I can kind of 
to jiggle around my sugar in there. And what I'm going to do is probably leave this for, I reckon I'm going to leave it for the next month or so. Every so often I might give it a little bit of a, a mix up. Just try and really distribute those oils through the sugar and part as much of that beautiful vanilla aroma into the sugar as possible. And then what I see people use this for is things like you know, vanilla and coffees and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just replacing for you know vanilla and sugar in recipes, but with a small amount like this, I think I'll just put it in a nice little container and use it for our cuppers. That sounds like a great way to use it. Gosh, that was so easy. And it even still says on it what the uh, vanilla bean was that I've used to make it. So yeah, that's super cool. I love joining groups that um, give me new ideas and Facebook has been an amazing place to learn a lot of new ideas over the years. And uh, yeah, the injury group has definitely been super helpful to inspiring me with lots of new vanilla ideas lately. There's a bit of a rabbit hole though. And uh, yeah, I could see that you could very easily get addicted to doing vanilla projects because they do share some incredible, incredible stuff. So it's definitely well worth having a bit of a look you are into vanilla or vanilla curious. <laughs> oh, I should have mentioned when we were putting all of those beans into this 600 ml jar, you might have been thinking, wow, that's a lot of vanilla beans for one small jar. And there is actually a bit of a reason for that. That is because I'm doing what's called a double fold, which is kind of like a double strength vanilla. I don't think I've got the ratios exactly right on that um, injury group. There's a really cool table that they have just to give you a bit of an idea of how much alcohol to put to how much bean. As you know, I can be a little bit more fluid in the kitchen, but essentially this is kind of around a double strength. And yeah, I just want to have a bit of a go at what it's like having something that is a little bit of a stronger vanilla product versus kind of the normal strength that I do. So that's why it does look like there is a lot of beans in this little jar here. So there we go for today, but as I said, I will come back and I'll show you that Frenchy bean order as well and what that looks like compared to these ones here. But for today, I'm pretty happy. This morning we've got out a beautiful bag of vanilla sugar and I am really interested to see how much flavor gets imparted in that and another jar of what will be a double strength vanilla extract. Just got to wait a year. All right, stick with me. Don't leave yet because, as I said, we've got the premium order coming and hopefully that'll be in the mail super soon as well. And I'll show you what that one looks like too. Package number two's arrived and once again, it smells oh, so, so yummy. I'm hiding out in the garden to open this one at the moment because there is lots of activity in the house because it's school holidays here at the moment and uh, yeah, lots of activity. So I thought it might be a bit quieter to film out here. So let's see if I can open this up while holding the camera. Probably not. All right, let me put this down for a sec, snip, and then we'll pull them out together. All righty, that's all snipped open now. Let's pull them out and see what we got with these roulette beans. All right, so the first one is an ounce of Peruvian whole vanilla beans. I am probably going to have to do a bit of a, uh, a Google of the different types of beans because I'm definitely not a vanilla bean connoisseur. But uh, yeah, they're a nice size bean. If I compare that to the size of my hand. All right, so that's one ounce of those. And let's have a look. What's our second one? So here is our second one, and this one here says it's some of the Reunion V Planifolia Vanilla Beans, 1.2 ounces. All right, there we go. So that's the two beans that I got in the roulette, but I definitely need to have a bit of a look just to see what the characteristics are for each one of these. Alrighty, so I've just looked up this first one here, which is the Reunion V Planifolia Vanilla Beans. 
And these ones apparently are from an island off Mauritius, which is what Reunion actually is. It's a place. Silly me. And the description of them though sounds really good. Um, it says like it's like candied pecans or like burnt butter or a chocolate hazelnut type spread. That's kind of characters of these beans here. And that sounds really interesting. So I've just looked up these ones. I didn't actually have the variety on these. It just said Peruvian whole vanilla beans. And on their website, I only see that they've got one variety, which is the B. Pompona. I'm probably saying that wrong. It's described as kind of like quite a fat bean. And I'm not sure if you can see these ones here are actually really thick. So I think that might be what they are. And if that is, that's pretty exciting because it's got a really interesting description. It talks about them being a fairly kind of rare bean grown in Peru in their native environment. And they're actually pollinated by bees. And a lot of the vanilla beans are actually hand pollinated in different areas because, well, that they need to be but uh yeah these ones being grown in that native environment they actually get pollinated by the bees which is kind of cool and the description of the flavor is that it's kind of floral and raisin like so that's quite a different description to these other ones here and that's pretty cool because what i'm hoping to do is put both of these in the same type of alcohol and in 12 months time i'll be able to see what the flavor differences are like between these two very different premium varieties of beans. Because it was so busy inside, I thought I'd do a voiceover for this bit on what I did with the beans. These ones here are those Pompona beans from Peru. And I did confirm that with Indri. And look how massive and fat they are. There was only four in that pack, but four was all it took to make up an ounce. I used neutral alcohol again with these ones and the reason for that is I really really did want to see what the flavor profile was of these beans. I didn't want to have any other flavors like rum kind of overlaying the vanilla. I want to do a side by side comparison once these are ready. These ones are those reunion beans. The variety is the, the planifolia. There was a few more in this pack so there was nine I think in total. And you can see all the oil that is coming off of those. It just absolutely incredible the amount of oil that was coming off on my fingers as I was processing these. And for the rest of the day, my fingers smelled absolutely amazing. It didn't matter how many times I was kind of washing, I smelt like vanilla. So this is what they look like when they were all processed up. And you can see on the right, those Pompona ones from Peru, already that quick, I was starting to get the oils coming out into that alcohol and already it was starting to color up. And that was like really exciting. And I've continued to see that happening as it's stored away in my study. I then started getting onto the sugar. And again, I didn't want to waste all that beautiful vanilla-y goodness that was in those bags. So I grabbed out the vacuum sealer, threw some sugar into those bags again, like we did earlier in this video and sealed those up. And once, oh, and again, sealed them up with a little bit of room in there. Didn't do the vacuum mode because I wanted to be able to move that sugar around to be able to get all that vanilla -y, oily goodness off the inside of the bag. So again, just gave that a really good massage. And every so often I actually go to my study even now and I just give that a little bit of a rub and I am just about to use these ones. And then it was done. So here's everything we've made with our two orders. The first one that we did, those Madagascar bourbon cured beans, that's going to be about 600 mils of extract when that's ready. And look at the dark colour already, I mean you almost can't see through that to the beans. And that's only been going for about a month now. And then we've got our vanilla sugar, which I still haven't opened up, but I think we'll give that a try fairly soon. Just giving it as long as I can before I finally give in and open that one up. And then I've got the two lots of, this is just the neutral alcohol that I've used today on the two different types of roulette beans, the Peruvian ones on this side. And as you saw, they were beautiful, big, fat beans. And then we've got the reunion ones here. And you can see already, even though, you know, these have pretty much been put in at the same time, there's already a bit of color coming off of these Peruvian ones. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. And of course, with the bags, once again, as I did with the first lot of beans, I popped in some sugar. So there was a cup of sugar that went in each one of these, a cup of sugar in the Peruvian ones, 
and also a cup of sugar that went in the reunion ones as well. So I should have a few cups of yummy vanilla sugar. And that's just a bit of an added bonus because I was really only going for extract. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed following along as I've made the order of the Indri beans. Hopefully you've also enjoyed hearing a little bit about the group as well and you know how you can get wonderful ideas like what we've done with the vanilla sugar here. And if you stick with me over the next year, in about a year's time, it'll be exciting to do a bit of a side-by-side -side test, trying out each one of these different extracts, just to see if I really can pick much of a difference between the premium type beans and kind of the, the more standard vanilla extract beans in those Madagascar ones as well. Anyway, as always guys, thanks for following along and I'll catch you later.